the state we're in, in the moment, the state we're in at any moment, powerfully impact, impacts the meaning we associate to something. The state we're in in the moment powerfully impacts the meaning that we associate to something or that we assign to something. So one way to change what things mean to you is just change your darn state. Is that true? I mean, if you're feeling great, do things just kind of bounce off you that normally if you're feeling upset, would you change the way you look at them probably, change the way you feel about it? You bet. So we need to really still manage our state. And we talked about that a great deal last session. I want to make sure that that's part of your life's work. Because your life's work is really learning how to live in a way where you spend most of your time enjoying yourself, very little time in pain. Most of your time in pleasure, very little pain. And living your life hopefully in a way where not only do you feel good all the time, but the people around you feel good just by being around you. That because they're around you, they feel a lot less pain and a ton of pleasure. See, that's my idea of success. Success is when you've learned to live your life in a way where you experience tons of pleasure every day and almost no pain. And, simultaneously, where the way you live also causes the people around you to experience very little pain and tons of pleasure. Then you know you're really successful. Because if you feel good and nobody else does, you're a failure. Now, that doesn't mean you go around and try and make everybody feel good. Some people have an investment in feeling bad because they think feeling bad equals feeling good. Are there people that believe that, yes or no? Yeah, because they think, if I feel bad, then people will notice me, or they'll love me more, or they'll help me more, or I'll get more attention, which means feeling good. People have weird crap they work up inside their head about how to get to feeling good. Some people think, I'm going to feel good when I make a billion dollars. Some people are like, when I have this, this, and this, when I get married, have these many children, this and this, then I'll feel good. Some people have, well, I'll feel good if I feel bad, because then people will notice me and make me feel good. Or you could just, like, choose to feel good. Which one do you think might be a more intelligent approach? Because who's in control there? You are. You don't have to worry about the environment. And by the way, when you're feeling good, it tends to make you want to feel even better. It makes you share good feelings with other people, which makes them feel good, which makes them reciprocate usually. Not always, but usually. Kind of nice. So the bottom line is we've got to manage our state still. And as a reminder, as far as that's concerned, changing state means change the meaning. And the way you can do it is either by changing your what? Anybody remember from last session? Change your what? Change your what? Change your physiology. Physiology, again, means the way you move, the way you breathe, your facial expressions, your gestures. The way you use your body determines the way you feel. You've got to remember that for the rest of your life. If you're not feeling the way you want to feel, first thing you do is just change the way you're moving. Emotion is created by what? Motion. Emotion is created by motion. You have 50 muscles in your face. A slight change in any of these muscles will radically change the way you feel. Remember we did this last time, I think. What I'd like you to do right now, real quick, is create some tension in your body, some tension, then put a big, huge smile on your face while you're doing it and notice how it feels. How many feel somewhat excited when you feel this? Let me see your hands. You know why? Excitement has tension in it. The only difference is you send a different biochemistry into your body. You fire off different biochemicals when you make a smile. Physically, it changes. You want to get depressed? What do you do? Drop your shoulders, look down, breathe shallow, drool. Ugh. Change the way you move. Some people have limited emotions because they have limited motion. They're trying to express their feelings and they go, I have something important I want to share with you. Hear me. Feel me. I am man. <laughs> Feel this? Versus, listen to me. Come on, let's make this happen. Let's do this. Do you understand what I'm talking about here? The more emotion you have, the more emotion you have. And there's certain emotions you're not feeling because you're not making certain movements happen in your face. You want to change that. You want to go for more. See, did I mention to you last time, did we talk about how certain people who live together for a long time begin to look like each other? Did I mention it? Do you remember why? Because in order to be in rapport, we like people who are like us. So we mirror back similar facial expressions. We do it enough and we literally mold our muscles to be in that way. And we use those kinds of emotions on an ongoing basis. A lot of people look like their dog. I don't have the explanation for that one. <laughs> I don't know if they're mirroring in that case, right? Maybe they're trying to pick somebody like it, right? But see, the thing we've got to realize is we've got to control our physiology. So throughout this day, as last time, I want you to remember to live at level 10. You remember what that means? Living at level 10 means what you've got to do is ask yourself on a scale from 0 to 10, where's my level of energy? 0 is dead, 10 is unstoppable. Which level is going to allow you to get more out of this weekend? Which one? 10, without a doubt. If nothing else happens from you coming to these fortune programs, but every time you get here, you demand from yourself for four days to live at level 10. Do you think you might develop a little stronger emotional muscle, yes or no? 
And pretty soon what used to be hard to do, like demanding 10, is the way you live. It's easy. It's like you can live that way easy, no problem. And now you go home and you live at that level. Does that impact your patients, yes or no? Does that impact each other in the office, yes or no? Does it impact your home life? Does that impact those ecstasy ideas we had about the relationship at home? Yes. See, if you're level 10 every time with your personal relationship, would that enhance it, yes or no? So how do you determine whether you're at 10 or not? You decide to go there, and the way you decide to go there is you've got to ask yourself on a regular basis, where am I? See, I found the more you measure something, the better it gets. But if you don't measure it, you're not going to do well. If you set a goal on New Year's Eve, and then you check next New Year's, you're in trouble. Because you had one correction. It was at the end of the year, and it was too late. Once a month, you got a better chance. Once a week, you can really have it. Once a day, you won't have a bad year, you won't have a bad month, or have was a bad day. The more we measure, the better we get. So what we've got to do is ask ourselves, where are we on a scale from 0 to 10? Where are you right now on a scale from 0 to 10? Hmm. Sit right now like you would if you were at level 10. Okay, that's clear. You weren't at 10 then, isn't it? <laughs> Come on, sit the way you'd be at level 10. I mean, absolutely, totally energized, excited, having fun, being outrageous and playful. Sit the way you'd be sitting right now if you're at level 10. Come on. And most, oh, you're not at 10. Come on. Come on, this is not 10. Let me see 10 here. Come on, even more energy, come on. Most of you would probably have to make some noise or do something with your body to get to level 10. Come on, wake your body up. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, wake your body up. Come on. Come on. Come on. Now, this is level 10. Now, go to level 2. And imagine trying to learn in this pace for the next three days. Go back to level 10. Come on, go, 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 go. Come on, come on. Come on, 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 come on. Now, I want you to commit you're not going to drop below level eight for the rest of the weekend. Are you willing to do that? Yes or no? Yes. Yes or no? Yes. Great. Now, if it's tough to stay at level 10, you want to push yourself to level 20. So just as a reminder, stand up. Remember how we do this? We put ourselves in a yes state. Y'all remember what that means? Yes. Good. Then what I want you to do right now is take off your jacket. You have that. Not your blouse, ma'am. Just the jacket. Now we're going to put ourselves in that yes state. We're going to put ourselves in that state I talked about last time. Remember I gave you a metaphor the last time we were together, a reminder. I said there's a puddle of water here in front of me, and I'm an old person. I come up to that water, what will I do? No, not just walk around it. I'll walk around it and bitch about it while I walk around it. Okay. But if I'm a kid, how do I deal with a puddle? That's right. Yes. Boom. That's the state we're going in. All those who want to do that for the weekend say aye. If you were in that state and somebody like came along and said, yeah, 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 how do kids deal with that? They go, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Would that be a healthier response than going, yes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for new ways to hiss and get this person. Would that be more healthy, yes or no? Yeah. Sure, it's more playful, it's more outrageous. Next time somebody is real bitchy, just get real bitchy back, we'll do it funny. Go, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Will that break their pattern? Yeah, you might make piss them off even more. <laughs> well, at least we're moving them in some direction. So when I say now, what you're going to do is you're going to wake your body up like a little kid again. You're going to scream. Wait, wait, wait. Gonna, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> you're going to scream and yell and be totally outrageous like a kid. If you weren't here before, you'll catch on quick. Then at the peak of our being totally bizarre, weird, outrageous, playful, seductive, fun, adventurous, and outrageous again, what we're going to do at the peak of that is we're going to go and we're going to clap our hands and say the word yes right at that moment. And when you copy your hands and say yes, at that moment, your job is to create more energy, more excitement, more outrageousness than the moment before. We'll do it faster and faster. At the end, we'll do the woke clap. But what I want you to do is go to level 20 on this. On a scale from 0 to 10, you're going to go to level 20. You go, that's impossible. That's why we're going to do it. Because also, once you've been to level 20, level 10 feels like you're relaxing by contrast. Okay, first let's just say, try the word yes strongly. Notice how it feels again. Ready? Yes. Say it again stronger. Yes. Oh, even stronger. Yes. yes. One more time. Yes. yes. That feel pretty good? Yes! Okay, good. <laughs> now, let's put it all together. Be a little kid again, be outrageous, create some energy, come on! level three. Now some of you here for the first time going, what have I gotten myself into? It's a cult! It's the yes cult. 
Now, now, how do you get a muscle? You push yourself beyond what's comfortable and you do it consistently. And that creates growth. So we're going to do it again. You go, I barely survived the first one. <laughs> Let's try it again. Ready? Wake your body up. Be outrageous. Come on. In this state, if somebody had some petty upset with you, could you handle it? Yes. Great. Then get a bouncing hug from the person next to you and grab a seat. And grab a seat. All right. We said there were two ways, though, that we could change our state. One was to change our what now, nice and loud? Or the other is to change our focus. Change the way we're representing things to ourselves. Like picturing things in our head is one way we focus. Somebody doesn't show up on time, we picture our head. I'll see why, because they're out there messing around, because they don't care about me, because this and this and this. Another way we focus is by what we say to ourselves. We represent, oh, well, they're not doing it probably because they don't really love me. And we talk to ourselves in certain ways. We get all these negative feelings. But if we change what we focus on, we change what we feel. If you think of something you're afraid of and you focus on it, will you feel it? You bet. If you wanted to feel depressed right now, how many could pull it off? No problem. How would you do it? You remember, don't you? A little reminder here. Just put yourself in a lousy physiology. Or, easily, another way you could do it, of course, mess up your biochemistry. Eat in a way that drops your blood sugar through the floor. Or else could you pull it off? Uh, all you have to do is think of something that once happened that made you feel bad. Something in the past and remember it again. That seems very intelligent, doesn't it? And feel bad about it once again. <laughs> How many of you would go to a movie that was terrible over and over and over and over again? How many would think that would be real intelligent? Let me see your hands. But if you, one of your friends said, yeah, I'm going to this movie. I hate it. It sucks. I'm going back there again. <laughs> you go, How many times have you been to this movie? About 4,000. What would you probably ask them? Why would you go back there? Well, because I have to. Would you believe them? I don't believe you either when you tell me that. But I always believe in you because I know you know better. You don't need to go to those movies anymore. They're a bunch of myths anyway made by poor directors. Lousy writers, lousy producers. You're a better producer, director, and writer now. You're probably even a better actor or actress. So why not create it the way you want it instead of seeing the same old movies over and over again? Most producers I know don't sit and watch their worst movies over and over and over again and feel bad about them again. What the most of them do is they go, that was part of my learning experience. <laughs> Time to move on. How else could you feel bad, by the way? You could do it currently, couldn't you? All you have to do is think of something you think you've lost that maybe hasn't even happened. Right? Or think of something that you want but you're not getting right now and feel bad about it. Or you could think of something that hasn't even happened yet and feel bad about it in advance. <laughs> couldn't you do that? Like, oh my God, and focus on, what if this happens? Oh, oh God, feels terrible, oh gosh. Remember, a coward dies a thousand deaths, a courageous man or woman only once. Because a coward runs it through the head about eight million times and feels like they're dying eight billion times. If you have any faith, any courage, then if it really ever does happen, you'll just deal with it once. You feel the pain only one time instead of stacked over and over and over and over again. If you want to feel good, could you do that? Sure. Would a producer go back to some of their best movies and see them again, do you think? Yes or no? Would they even share some of those movies with their friends? You know what some people do? Some people actually take the worst movies of the past and go share them with their friends, their worst movies. Tell them all about all the gory details of it. And the friend goes, yeah, that's really great. Yeah. <laughs> but see, a real great producer director shows in their current films, shows them some examples of films that are about to come called previews. Previews are rather exciting usually. Or they show them the best films of their past and share those with them so that people get to enjoy more of their life. Maybe even learn something. Who knows? But you can remember something that once happened that was great and feel good about it. You can think of something right now that you could feel great about or you could think of something that hasn't even happened yet and feel good about it in advance. What determines what you focus on though is one thing. The questions you ask yourself. The questions you ask yourself determine what you focus on in that moment. What questions you ask are usually controlled by your beliefs. Because you could ask any question, but unless you do it consciously, you'll just ask the same questions that are in alignment with your old beliefs, your old BS, belief systems.
So the bottom line is we've got to ask better questions. And I will tell you the question I want you to learn to ask the next time you get upset with someone. This is the first question I would ask myself if I were you. What else could this mean? What else could this mean? I will know a person is intelligent when I say, this and this happened, I started to get upset, and I thought to myself, well, what else could this mean? You know, maybe it doesn't mean what I think it means. Maybe they weren't really being harsh. Maybe what it means is they're stressed. Maybe what I'm hearing from this person about what they said about me is not true. Maybe what it really is is a distortion. Not that they mean to distort, but it's a distortion. Maybe what I've heard this person said about me is a deletion. Maybe this person is generalizing. Maybe this person heard it through somebody else. Maybe that person misinterpreted what I said. Maybe this whole thing isn't accurate. Maybe it's accurate, but they're stressed. Maybe I'm just stressed right now. Maybe what this really means is I'm stressed and I need to get more resourceful and be more loving. And I can handle this. Maybe what this is, what this means is, is it's a chance for me to go to the next level. What else could this mean? You're only upset when you've decided on a meaning that creates an upset. So if you're feeling upset, what else could this mean? Because again, how many of you have ever thought something meant something and been upset about it later on found you were wrong? How many have done this? So wouldn't it be smart as a first step to always ask, what else could this mean? And search for other possibilities. See, with my friends, I always do this. If I care about somebody, I always do this. And what I've learned to do is even with people I didn't so much care about or didn't even know. What else could this mean? See, that makes your whole life open up and expand. See, once you think you know what everything means, you're in deep trouble. Because when you're a kid, you know what happened? You used to have this big giant doorway. But then you became an adult and you noticed the door. And you started to say, I know how this door works. And you closed it a little bit. You said, I know how the world is. And you closed it more. I know the world is. And pretty soon, now you know how the world is. You absolutely know how the world was. See, when you're a kid, you didn't know how the world was. It was just amazing how big the world was. It was amazing how much wonder there was in the world. How much you could learn, how much you could grow, how stimulated you were. You were stimulated by all kinds of things because you didn't know for sure what everything was. You were always curious about what things were. But as an adult, you now know what everything is. And if it doesn't fit in there, it's wrong. Hmm. We want to open our door back open by saying, well, yeah, but what else could it mean? 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 <sighs> Feel a little freer. Hmm. The other question I tend to ask myself is, do I know everything there is to know about this? Do I know everything there is to know about this? Somebody says something to you. They're really upset with you. Or somebody raises their voice. That means they hate me. What else could it mean? Well, it could mean they're stressed, could mean they don't understand, could mean they don't even realize they're yelling. Could mean that they need some support. Could mean what I know it means, it's a cry for help. Could mean that I'm oversensitive right now. Could mean that I react to voice tonality instead of real feelings. Could mean that, could mean nothing. Could just be something that came and went. Do I know everything there is to know about this? No, I don't know everything there is to know about this. I mean, there's all kinds of things that could be going on, I don't know. Opens your world again. We're going to teach you to do this in a format that makes sense. Now, the thing that happens, though, if we want to be able to really take control of our meaning is we've got to pay attention to our emotions. So in your notes, write down emotions. And under emotions, you might, in fact, you might want to write the word negative emotions. Negative emotions. Negative emotions. And then as soon as you write it down, cross it out. The word negative, anyway. What are some of your negative emotions? Tell me what they are. Fear, what else? Pardon me? Hate, what else? Anger, what else? Guilt, what else? Worry, what else? Upset, guilt, what else? Frustration. Now I got a question for you. Are they really negative? I'm here to tell you there's no way they're negative. Every emotion you've ever had in your life serves a purpose. The problem, the reason it's negative is you've been calling it negative instead of getting the message it's been trying to give you. Every emotion you have, including those you think of as negative, those ones you call negative emotions, I call them emotional messages. I also call them calls to action. All those negative emotions as you used to label them are really a call to action. Fear is a call to action. By the way, do you feel that call to action in your body when you're afraid? Yes or no? Does your adrenaline start pumping? Your whole system start gearing up? Emotions are a call to action. And the call to action says one of two things has to happen in that call to action. It's a message. Every emotion is a message. A call to action. And the action of the message it's trying to give you is that you need to change either, number one, your perception of this, or number two, your current actions. Every negative emotion you've ever felt is not negative. Now, you may be overusing them. I'll agree with you. You may be indulging in them. I agree with you. You may not be getting the message from them. What's making it negative is you're not getting the message it's trying to give you. But every emotion, fear, 
frustration, hate, anger, guilt, all of those emotions are here to serve you if you get quick the message. But what most of us do is we just indulge in the emotion. So we never get the message and that's why it's negative because it starts screwing up your body because what it is is a signal. Signal to act and you're not acting. That's why you feel sick to your stomach. You're not acting. You just keep on indulging the emotion and not hearing the message. So the message is always you must change something. Negative emotions are saying you've got to change something. Either change the way you're perceiving this. Change the meaning you've linked to this. Change your perception. Change your focus or change your actions. Change what you're doing because it isn't working. That's why you're having that emotion. Don't make your emotions wrong. Appreciate them. Be grateful for them, but immediately then ask yourself, hey, what's the message that my emotion is trying to give me here? What do I need to change? My perception or my actions? Does this make sense? Yes, no? So then, how do we make use of it? Well, first of all, notice this. How do most of us deal with our emotions? Well, most of us deal with our emotions by suppressing them. In fact, before you write that down, actually, I put over here four ways to deal with emotions. Four ways we deal with emotions. I think the number one way most people deal with their emotions is they try to avoid them. By the way, how effective is that? No. You might do it for a moment or two, but most people, they just try to avoid feeling. Isn't that true? People like, who don't like to feel negative feelings are so afraid of negative feelings, they try not to feel any feelings. Now, if you don't feel any feelings, you really are going to have some pain. Because that's what life is for. Life, part of the juice of life is expressing and feeling. But sometimes people have had so much pain they say, I don't want to feel anything. It never works, because eventually it comes out anyway. And then you feel bad about never having felt bad. You feel bad about the fact you didn't feel good. You have a sense of loss, because you didn't feel things. Second way people try and deal with their emotions is they endure them. They're going to grunt it out. I'm going to endure these. I'm going to make it through this. I'll hang on to this. And again, this doesn't work. Now, they may try and disassociate after a while here again, or they may try and suppress the emotion. I'll just endure it. I'll just keep pushing it down, and I'll make it through it. I'll just endure it. That doesn't make it better either. Third way, what some people do, I don't know if you've ever seen this happen. I'm sure you've never done this. People compete to see who feels the worst. What some people do is they keep track of their emotions so they can share them with other people and compete. So somebody says, oh, man, I feel like hell. Oh, you feel like hell. Let me tell you how I feel. You think you got a problem? Let me tell you my problem. You think you got the biggest problem? Check out my problem. It stands out to here. And people sit there and try and argue about who's got the worst problem. Right? Or the fourth thing that I don't have up there that I'd say, the fourth thing that people do is try and share their pain. Share their problem. They think, oh, I can get rid of my emotion by sharing it with others. So they try and get other people to feel bad too. That way we'll be friends. We can share in the pain together. We must love each other. Are these very intelligent ways to deal with your emotions, yes or no? No, you don't want to avoid them. You don't want to endure them. You don't want to compete for who's got the biggest and worst emotion. Try and make yours worse than somebody else's. You don't want to share them. Make them feel bad too. What a friend you are. Instead, what you want to do is step five. Learn from them and utilize them. You want to learn from them and utilize them. Now, in order to learn from them and utilize them, or to change an emotion, we have to change what something what's to us. Starts with an M. We have to change what something what? Means to us. When we change what something means, we transform our emotion. We have a transformation. Does that make sense? In other words, if I'm feeling really upset about something, I'm angry, angry, angry. Do I have to communicate that to get off my anger? No, not necessarily. I'm angry because of the meaning I linked up. What if I change what it means in my head and I realize, hey, that's not what it means? Then will I feel angry, yes or no? Yes or no? If I'm really angry about something, I'm angry because of the, what I've linked up to it. I'm saying, well, I'm angry because they did that and that means this. But if I really analyze it and I look at it for a while and I go, God, that's a bunch of crap. It doesn't really mean that. Then I've transformed my feeling. Do I now have to go to that person and say, what you did made me angry? Yes or no? Yes or no? No, because I don't have that feeling. I truly don't have it. I'm not suppressing it. I've transformed it. Suppression, however, is when you keep the same meaning. That you keep the same meaning. You're upset about something and you keep the same meaning. You don't change the meaning. All you try and do is stuff the emotion. You try to pretend it's not there. That's suppression. So if you keep the same negative emotion, you don't change how you feel about it. You just try and pretend it's not there. That's suppression and that's when you get in trouble. 
So our goal is not just to take things and not suppress them and just express whatever we feel, because if you just go express whatever you feel and you don't think it out, are you going to always communicate well, yes or no? Now, in fact, you may say things later on you'll regret in the heat of the moment because you were in state. So what you first want to do is see if you can transform it, honestly and sincerely, and if you can't, then your goal is to get someone to help you to transform it. Go to the source and get the source to help you to transform this. So you know what? I felt this way about this. I made up this bizarre meaning. I know it's not true because I know who you really are. But this is the kind of crap I did in my head. Can you help me? I need to change this. Can you give me some more information or some feedback or help me to clarify this thing? Because I'm, I'm, I kind of screwed this up in my brain because I know that's not what you meant. But that's what I did inside my head. Can you help me out? Is that different then? You know something? The other day when you did this, I felt this, which by the way implies what they did made you feel something. Is that true? Yes or no? Does anybody do anything and make you feel something? Yes or no? Yes or no? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Now you have a right to feel the way you feel, but that isn't true that it's actually what made you feel that way. You chose to make yourself feel that way. You communicated that to yourself. So instead of saying, when you did this, that made me feel this, that's implying that somebody made you do something and that takes responsibility away from the one person who can change your life, meaning you. So I request in the future this. Nothing wrong with any of that. What we want to do is enhance it. The way we want to enhance it is come from the place of I'm communicating because I want to transform something and I'm responsible, not them. You know, I need your help. I need your help. The other day when this thing happened, I used that to interpret that to mean this. And I know it's not true because I know who you are. I need some clarity. Can you help me out? I got to clean this up. And me. Who's responsible? By the way, will they want to help you? Yes or no? By the way, what you're really doing here is making clear what you're really doing, which is you're doing a cry for help, maybe not crying, you're making a request for help instead of crying. Make sense? And people here, this is a request for help. Do we want to help other people, yes or no? Especially us, we're all in the helping business. That's why we do what we do. That's the bottom line. So we're going to develop a format like this where we don't suppress, but we don't just express. Because you know what happens? If you just go out there and whatever you feel you express, what you really do is you vent. And then you make it right or you demand. See, venting and demanding does not make communication better in the long term. How many would agree with me on this? Okay. We want to go to a different level. We want to transform our communication. We want to transform what things mean to us. Now, here's what I want to be able to have you do. I want you to be able to take the emotions that you're experiencing and be able to deal with them quickly. So I want to give you six steps to changing or dealing with, not dealing with, but I guess utilizing is the right word. Six steps to utilizing any emotions you feel that you used to call negative, which now I call emotional messages, or calls to what? Calls to action. Whenever you're feeling a negative emotion, which we're now going to call emotional messages, it's a call to action and it's saying you need to change something. What do you need to change? One of two things. Repeat back. What are they? Change either number one, you're what? No. Well, you could change your physiology, but if you are getting feedback right now, you're getting a negative emotion. That negative emotion is a message. It's saying you've got to change either your perception or your actions. And your actions could be the way you're using your body or your focus or whatever. Change your perception or your actions. Now here's what happens when you get a negative emotion or now an emotional message. Number one, you want to identify what the emotion is. So you're starting to feel negative things. You want to identify what is the emotion. Now when you identify the emotion, what the emotion is, like you're feeling, you're really upset. Ask yourself, well, what am I really feeling? Underneath this, you might write down the question, what am I really feeling? What am I really feeling? So when you say, I'm upset, you might say, what am I really feeling? And what might your answer be when you say, what am I really feeling? I'm upset with this person. What am I really feeling? I might be feeling hurt. Does that change how you feel in that moment as you identify that? Yes or no? Yes. And when you say, what am I really feeling? You might put a little note in your notes. Use some TV. Use some TV when you come up with your label. Transformational what? Vocabulary. So instead of saying, I'm destroyed, I'm devastated, I'm humiliated, you might say, I'm feeling a little bit hurt. Use TV and use what I call softeners. Softeners are the words like a little bit. So softeners and TV. Here's the second key. Once you've identified what it is, and by the way, usually it's going to be, I have a sense of hurt or a sense of loss. Almost all emotions will probably come down to that in most cases. Is that true? In most cases, not all. Second thing you do, acknowledge and appreciate 
the message it has for you. Don't deny your emotions. Don't avoid your emotions. Don't suppress your emotions. Don't make them wrong. Don't share them. Start by identifying what they really are and then acknowledge and appreciate the message it has for you. In other words, acknowledge, hey, this is a real emotion. I'm glad I'm having it. It's going to have a great message for me. Then go to step three. Get incredibly curious. Get incredibly curious as to what it has to offer you, as to what the message is. Get incredibly curious as to what the message is. Underneath this one, number three, as you get incredibly curious as to what the message is, write down the question. What is the real message this emotion is giving me? What is the real message this emotion is trying to give me? What is the real message this emotion is trying to give me? And I'll offer you some ways to do this. Let's do the, all six, though, so you know where we're going. Step four. Okay, the question on three, some of you are still there. Question number three is, what is the message this emotion is trying to give me? What's the real message? Number four, get yourself to feel reassured that you can deal with this emotion. Get yourself to feel reassured that you can deal with this emotion. See, a lot of times the stress is, oh my God, how am I going to deal with this? So get yourself reassured you can deal with emotion. And the way you do that is, remember a time when you've dealt with this emotion successfully in the past. Remember a time when you've dealt with this emotion successfully in the past. So if all of a sudden you start to feel depressed, that's a pretty negative feeling. I first of all would not call it depression. I'd say a little bit down. But the first thing you do is you go, okay, I'm feeling this terrible feeling. I start to feel depressed. Well, what am I really feeling? Well, I'm really just feeling a little bit down. Okay, great. You know what? That's great. I appreciate it. That's a message. I need to get curious. What is that message? What's the message this thing's trying to give me? And what depression's message usually is, by the way, is you need to reset your priorities. That you don't feel like you're in control. That you got too many things going at once. You, don't, you feel out of control when you're depressed. So what you have to do is set some priorities and go do the first one on your list. That's what the message is telling you. You feel out of control. The way to get in control, reset your priorities and go do one thing and complete it. The minute you do, your self-esteem will go right back up. So that's a message. So what's the message it's offering me? And by the way, I'm going to teach you the nine most powerful emotions that you probably experience, what their messages are. So you won't have to wonder about this. You'll know what they are. Step four, get yourself to feel reassured by remembering times when you dealt with this in the past. Have you ever felt a little bit down before, what you used to call depressed? How many have ever felt that way in the past? Let me see your hands. How many have dealt with it? Let me see your show of hands. Great. If you remember that, two things happen. You're going to feel reassured you can deal with it, plus you're going to remember how you did it, which means you can use what you did in the past to change it right now. Why wait? Most of us forget the best parts of our past, which is how we dealt with things and turned them around. We just remember the negative feelings. That's kind of weird. Maybe we need to manage our memories better. Remember the things that have resources for us and forget the things that don't. Number five, get certain. Get certain that you can handle anything like this in the future. Get certain. Not only can you deal with the emotion you have right now, but what you should do is use this as an opportunity to be certain for yourself. Get yourself certain. If it ever happens in the future, I'll handle this emotion quicker and easier. Get certain that you can handle anything like this in the future by rehearsing yourself dealing with it in the future. In other words, think of a time in the future where this depression could have come up and see yourself, feel yourself rehearsing again. Use this as a tool of empowerment. So you remember a time when you were depressed before, you were a little bit down, you turned it around. It took you a while, but you threw it around. You remember what you did. Oh, I dealt with this before, I can deal with it again. And then you say, let me take this opportunity to get certain that I can handle this if it ever came up in the future. And the way I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna sit down right now, and I'm gonna think of, okay, what kind of things might happen in the future? I might get depressed, well, I might expect something didn't work, feel bad about it, let me think of a time like that. Okay, let me see myself, hear myself, feel myself, deal with it. You see here and feel yourself dealing with it easily. And you do this two, three, or four times. If you keep doing it two, three, or four times, then in the future when it comes up, guess what your brain will do? Your brain will go, oh, I can handle this. I'm already prepared. How many are following the logic of this? Let me see your hands. Okay? So get certain you can deal with it in the future by rehearsing. And by the way, remember this. You might want to put this in your notes. Your brain cannot tell the difference between something you vividly imagine and something you actually experience. Your brain cannot tell the difference between something you vividly imagine when you see it, you hear it, you feel it, you taste it, you touch it, you smell it in your, in your mind, and something that actually occurs. If you doubt this, have you ever had a dream that was so real, you had every physical response to it? How many have had a dream like that? Okay, you can have a dream anytime you want, even while you're awake. 
All you have to do is rehearse something in your mind enough times, vividly enough, and it's real. If you over and over again rehearse yourself dealing with emotion easily, then it's real. Next time it comes up, you've already got the programming. You already have the resources to turn around in a heartbeat. Then this emotional message, it's dealt with for the future, not just for today. And the sixth step, take action and change your life. Whatever the message is, take the action that you need to take and change your life. Do something. Doing something always will change how you feel. You feel bad because you're not doing anything. And by the way, you'll continue to feel bad until you do something to change. So you do anything, it'll improve you and move you in the direction you want to go. So let's take another example. What's another negative emotion you feel? Let's hear an example of one you felt recently. Somebody raise your hand. Rejection. So what's the first step when you think you're feeling rejection? What's step number one? Come on, guys, what is it? Identify it, specifically, identify what the emotion really is. Let's call it that. Identify what the emotion really is. Identify what the emotion really is. So you ask yourself, what am I really feeling? So a person said rejection. What were you really feeling? Shh, no, let him answer. That's your answer. <laughs> His answer was disappointment. Is that different than rejection, yes or no? Yes or no? Yes, and by the way, when he realizes he's just disappointed, it's not as intense as rejection, is it? What happened with one question? His pain just dropped. Still painful, probably, but not anywhere near as intense. Am I false or true on that? Okay, great. Now, so he's disappointed. Great, so now he knows when he really is disappointed, he might even add some TV or a softener here. And the softener might be, he might say, I was a what? A little bit disappointed. Well, I'm a little bit disappointed. Okay, that makes it even less. Now what does he do? Number two, does he make himself wrong for feeling that way? Yes or no? Yes or no? What does he do? He needs to acknowledge, and what else? Appreciate the fact that he's getting a very valuable message. And it's a message he needs to change something. He needs to change his perception about it so he's no longer disappointed, or he needs to change his actions so he doesn't be disappointed now or in the future. Step three, what does he need to do? Get incredibly what? Like a little kid, what? Curious. When we're curious, do we learn things more? Do we learn better when we're curious? You bet. So he needs to get incredibly curious about what this message has to offer him. If you were really curious, what do you think that message really had to offer you? Perhaps this was just an unmet expectation that was taking place up here and it wasn't even reality. What's happening to his level of emotional intensity right now? How many see that it's dropping? Can you see that? Okay, it's dropping right now. You go, great. Can you remember a time, next step is get himself re-what? Re-what? Great. And the way to do that is get him to what? Remember a time when he's dealt with it. Have you ever been disappointed before and dealt with it? Can you remember a specific time? Can you turn it around and made it good? Can you remember a specific one? Think for a moment, a time when you turn around and you made it great. You actually took it and made it to your advantage. Remember a time like that? How'd that feel? So you know how to deal with this, don't you? Well, I got a question for you. What did you do back then that changed it? He redefined the terms he was going to use. He changed his perception or his rules. Great. How'd that feel when you resolved it? So great. So when he goes to reassure this, two things happen in the reassurance. One is he sees he can deal with it. He sees and feels he can deal with this easily. And number two, he sees how. And number three, he remembers how good it feels to, to relieve himself from the feeling. So he remembers how good it feels to get rid of it. Which, by the way, makes him want to get rid of it right now. And what's the last two steps? Step number five. What do we want to make sure? We want to make sure he doesn't just not feel bad about it anymore now, but we want to make sure his future is better. We want to get him what? Get what? Certain that he can handle this in the future. So he probably feels pretty certain right now, but you know what I'd like you to do? I'd like you to think some other area in your life where it possibly in life you could have gotten disappointed in the future. Some kind of thing that might come up. Can you think of something that could come up and do that? Mm -hmm. Look, he already knows. Close your eyes for a minute. And just for a moment, what I want you to do is I want you to think of that thing starting to happen. When you start to get disappointed, or feel rejected, actually, is what you did initially, then you realize you're just disappointed, and then you just handle it. See yourself handling it in the future even better than you have in the past. And notice how good it feels the minute you handle it. Can you feel that? Mm -hmm. Think of another time, something else that could happen in the future, where it might have been a real, real major disappointment. But see yourself handling it real quickly, real easy, getting off and making it work, and notice how good you feel as soon as you handle it. Got it. Okay, do it one more time. Do three. Do a third one. Some other area of your life where you're really disappointed. See and feel yourself handling that real easily, real quickly. Got it. Good. How do you feel about your ability to deal with this in the future? More confident. Yeah. How many can hear it in his voice? Can you hear that? 
He has a depth in his voice. And the last thing is, go take action and change it. He may have already done that if it was changing a perception. Or you can go do it physically. How many follow the system? Okay, we're going to do one more. I need a volunteer up here so everybody can see this person. Because if you would have saw his face just now, it changed. Somebody who's had an emotion that you really, you know, recently had and it bugged you or created some negative feeling for you. Somebody's got one of those. Oh, nobody in the whole room. God, I don't want to be out there. I don't know what he'll do. Boy, all this, all this people here are pointing to this guy here. Is that your staff pointing at you, Dr. Bob? Dr. Bob, give him a hand. Yes, indeed. Great. Here you go, sir. He's going to reward you guys for this later. <laughs> he probably will, actually. That's right. Dr. Bob, what's a negative, a me, a me, negative message, a negative feeling that you've had recently that you'd like to change? You really are committed to changing, but it's been bugging you. Um, disappointment and rejection. Disappointment and yeah. rejection. Well, it seems a lot of that's going around. It must be catching. It's the rejection virus. People are spreading it. Okay, well, which one would you like to deal with? Or are they tied together? Well, actually, it's, um, it's probably... What, he, what question did he just ask? For him to say, actually, it's... Uh, he's already done step one. What's the question he just asked? For him to already say, actually, it's... Uh, what did he ask? He asked... He first of all started to identify what the feeling really was, didn't he? And the question he asked is, what am I really what? Feeling. What are you really feeling? Anger. Anger. Ah. Now, what, now what's that really? Well, what, what that really is, is um, uh, I was angry because I felt rejected. <clears throat> okay. And I was really disappointed about what happened, the circumstance. Ah. So what's he done? He's managed to stack his negative emotions one on top of another. Okay. And by the way, this is unique to Dr. Bob. <laughs> Nobody else you know does this, do they? But what, what are you really feeling? All that stuff, what's, that, what's behind all that stuff? You just really feel what? Rejected. Rejected. Disappointed. I mean, it was discounted, discounted by... Does he uh, look like a computer that keeps running the same program over and over again? He's a reject, disappointed. He's running right back through the thing. Do you feel hurt? Yes, yeah. Do you feel rejected or do you feel hurt? I feel hurt. Do you feel disappointed or do you feel hurt? Or do you feel a sense of loss? A sense of loss. Do you feel rejected or do you feel a sense of loss? Sense of loss. Do you feel angry or do you feel a sense of loss? Sense of loss. Do you feel hurt or do you feel a sense of loss? Loss. What does it always come down to? Loss. Now we can call it whatever we want. Okay? So he's identified it. So, next question is, what do we want him to do? Should he feel bad about having those feelings, yes or no? No, you know what? These are valuable messages that are coming to you. They really, truly are. But what you should feel bad about is indulging in them and not using them. Not learning. You want to feel bad? Feel bad if you don't learn anything. Then feel bad. And then get tired of feeling bad and just decide to learn something. Because you can learn something as soon as you ask, what can I learn from this, right? So, right now, instead of making him wrong, what I want you to do for a moment is really appreciate those emotions. Acknowledge the fact those emotions are, have a valuable message. And then immediately get what? Curious. Like a kid, get what? Curious. Get curious for a second as to what those messages really are. What, what can you really learn from that? What is that message really offering you? In other words, let's go back up to the first one you said. Rejection. By yeah. being rejected or disappointed, what, do you really, what is that motion of rejection trying to tell you? Um, the relationship's important. Love's important. It's telling him that relationship's important, that love is really important to him. Is that a valuable message? Yeah. What was that disappointment in telling you? What was the message it was trying to tell you? Um, now, a so person may say, I don't know. If you did know and it had a positive message, what do you th it's always telling you to change something. Mm -hmm. it's telling you to change your perception about something or it's telling you to change your actions. So what is that emotion of disappointment telling you? To change what? What do you need to change? How I love. How he loves. Very interesting. In what way do you need to change how you love? How it's communicated and shown. You, how it's communicated and shown. Mm -hmm. How do you need to communicate and show your love more effectively? Um, 
Mm, I'm curious. <laughs> Is that better than feeling rejected, disappointed, and lost? Yes or no? Yes. Is this a powerful transformation in this man? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, good. So stay curious, because that's it. Instead of going, oh, I don't know the answer. We don't know the answer, and you're a little kid. What do you do? You get even more what? Yes. If you don't know the answer, don't go, oh, God, I don't know the answer. But I don't know I feel so <laughs> They go, I'm getting more curious. You have plenty of time, because curiosity is valuable. What would you say? need to be more, uh, I'm confused. Good. Confused means confused. you're about to make a change. Is that true? See, when you know what things mean, you'll just keep doing it the way you've always done it. He was not so, confused when he went, I'm disappointed, I'm rejected, I'm frustrated. In fact, he kept doing it over and over again. He was not confused. He knew exactly how to do that. <laughs> now he's confused. His little brain's going, this little computer program's not working the same way. So, um, you know, so the Some question people. I always help them out with is, what do you need to change in order to no longer feel this? Do you need to change your perception or your actions or both? And what, what do you need to change about your perceptions? What do you need to change about your actions? You might want to write that down. But go ahead. So my actions should be different. I mean, okay. if, that were, if what I did didn't work, I need to try something else. That's right. So I need to communicate that differently or behave differently. Okay. And how many hear what he just said? Did you understand what he said? He said, what it's saying is, the way I communicated, the fact I got rejected is a message that love's really important to me, and that I need to change the way I'm communicating so I get what I want. Because obviously it didn't work, so I've got to change my approach. Is that true? Is that different than I'm not worthwhile as a meaning, or they don't love me as a meaning? Yes or no? Yes. Huge difference in how he feels. Have you ever felt rejected or disappointed in the past and dealt with it really powerfully or really effectively? Yes. Do you remember a specific time? Um, yes. Okay, go back to that time. And remember how you dealt with it. And how you turned it around and made it something positive. Okay. How'd that feel, first of all? Uh, great. A yeah. sense of accomplishment. Yeah, that's right. And how did you do it? I took action. What did you do take action? How did you do that? What did you do? Uh, I, I started doing things differently. Oh, great. I'm expressing myself differently. Did it work? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What? By the way, what is this doing now? It's teaching his brain, if you do this, you're going to get pleasure. What you used to do gave you what? Pain. The brain is always trying to avoid what? And move towards what? He's teaching his brain right now. He's rewiring his brain a little bit here. Now, by the way, I keep using these computer metaphors, and I, I see some of you get pained when I do that. And I think it's because you think, oh, do you think I'm just a computer? No, I have to see you as a spiritual being who also has a filtering system. And that filtering system, sometimes you allow to take control and keep you from doing what you do naturally, which is just love and appreciate other people, including yourself. Okay. So we've got to deal with both sides. How it is, how we operate unconsciously, as well as who we are. And we want to deal with how we operate so we can be more of who we are. Now, I'd like you to think about this for the future. First of all, you feel pretty good about you being able to deal with it right now? Yes. Yeah. And by the way, does he really look like he can deal with it now? Yes or no? Yes. So think about the future. I'd like to think of some place in the future where you could have felt rejected or disappointed. Something that could come up that could cause you to feel rejected or disappointed. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. Close your eyes if you would and see yourself using your skills and handling it ten times better, quicker, more easily, turning it around right away. And feel how good it feels to turn that around. Okay. How does that feel? Feels good. Yeah. Can you do it? Yes. Easily or hard? I can do it. You can do it. Okay, great. So now I want you to do it. That's great. So now I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to think of another time where it would come up. Only this time I want you to do it easily. I want you, there are resources inside of yourself you haven't thought of before. And I want you to do it and even enjoy it. Turn around and make it happen easier and quicker. Okay. 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 Look, mm -hmm. if I ask him to do it, can he do that? Yes. Yes. I'm asking him a better question. It gives him better resources. Okay. Can you see yourself handling it quicker and easier in that one? Yes. How does that feel? Great. How many see the difference and hear it in his voice? Great, let's do one more. Think of something else that could come out in the future where you could have felt rejected or disappointed, but now, heck no, you handle it really easily, real quickly, just like this. Okay. Have you already done it? Mm-hmm. Done. <laughs> He's getting a little faster at this, isn't he? He's got some experience. How do you feel when you do that? Super. Super. Look at him. <laughs> Look at his face. Now, if someone were to say, I'm going to reject you now, Thank you very much. <laughs> Give him a hand. Thank you very much, sir.
So, I want you to try this. Let me help you another step. Would it be useful instead of you seeing all of you are inside here trying to search around going, what does this emotion mean? I don't know what it means. Let me give you nine emotions and what they usually mean. Okay, would that be helpful? Great, sit up in your chair with some emo energy then. Put yourself in a peak state. And let's take a look at what nine of these emotions, or eight or seven, or whatever I put up here are. Number one, fear. So if you're feeling fear, what does that mean usually? What's the message? The message always is that you need to change something. Is that true, yes or no? So every negative emotion means I've got to what? I've got to what? Change something. Either my perception or what I'm doing. Fear means that you've got to prepare for something. You're afraid because your brain's saying message is prepare. Change what you're doing and get more prepared. Prepare for something that's going to happen so you're better prepared for it physically. Now sometimes we just indulge in the emotion and we stay in the fear and we really are prepared. For example, let's say you're going to get up to speak in front of a group and you're prepared but you still have fear. It's because you got the message, you did the work, but you didn't shut the emotion off and say, you know, I am prepared, no reason to be afraid anymore. I'm ready, I'm ready. You never told your brain, it's okay, you don't have to give me the message anymore, I've done my work. Okay? So it's saying you need to prepare for something. Maybe it's a physical challenge. Maybe it's preparing for some loss that may be coming up. Something that's about to come up, you need to be prepared for it. Okay, just get prepared. But once you get prepared, get off it. Let your brain know, okay, I am prepared, move on. Focus on what you want now. What's hurt? Hurt usually is telling you an expectation you had has not been met. It's just telling you, hey, you have this expectation, it's not met. So what should you do when you have an expectation that's not met? You should focus on what you do want now. Write down your notes. Focus on what you do want now. Don't keep focusing on why you're disappointed or how somebody disappointed you or how you feel so hurt by them. Okay? An expectation wasn't met and you need to change your approach. Focus on it. Or it means you need to change your communication. Hurt means you expected someone to treat you a certain way and they didn't treat you that way. So you need to change your communication. You need to come to them and say, you know, I need your help. You know, when you communicate that way, in the past, I've interpreted that to mean you didn't care. I know you care, because I know how much you love me and I love you. But, you know, could you help me out this way? What does it really mean to you when you do that? And then listen. Say, so, you know, in the future, I'd really appreciate it if, if you do it this way instead. Would that work for you? Would you be willing to do that? Okay, great. Fantastic. It's a message that says you've got to communicate your needs better if you're feeling hurt. Hurt means I need to communicate my needs better. Or hurt also means I need to meet someone else's needs. So you feel hurt because you need to meet their needs. That's why they didn't meet yours. Either you're not meeting their needs or you're not communicating how to have your needs be met. Or you have an expectation, you need to move on. This is not going to work out, so focus on what will. Third, anger. Anger is a message that says you have a major rule that's been violated. When you're angry, you have a rule that's been violated. We all have rules about how things must be and how they should be. And boy, some rules, if somebody violates some of our rules, man, we really get angry, don't we? By the way, you may also be angry because you violated your own rules. Is that true? Yeah. yeah, you're not doing what you believe you must do, and you get angry with yourself. And sometimes we get angry with ourselves, we spread that out towards somebody else, find somebody to lay blame on. Four, frustration. Frustration is a message that what you're doing isn't working, and that you need to what? Change. If you're frustrated, it means you still can succeed, but you got to change. You're frustrated, says, God, something's here and you know you could succeed and you're frustrated because what you're doing isn't working. Change and you can still get what you want. Flex. Disappointment. Disappointment's a message, again, that you expected something to happen it's not going to. So immediately focus on what you want now. Focus on what you want now. It's a message that you have to get off it. You need to let go of something and move on and focus on what you want now. Guilt. Guilt is a powerful emotion if it's not abused and overused and indulged in. Any of these emotions are lousy if you indulge in them. Would you agree with me on that? Sit there and indulge in your fear and your hurt and your anger. Indulging means you keep focusing on the feeling instead of getting the message and moving on and learning. Guilt, though, can be valuable. It's telling you you have violated one of your own standards. And you need to do something immediately to be certain you won't do this again. You're having that pain of guilt because your brain is saying, you just violated one of your most important standards of your life. You violated one of your own values. And you're going to keep getting this pain until you make yourself certain you're not going to do this again. You know what some people do? They just keep going back and feeling guilty about what they did in the past. The message is saying, get clear you broke your own rules and commit no matter what, you're not going to do it again. Make it clear, be certain you're not going to do it again, and your guilt will go away like that.
because that's the purpose of guilt, to make sure you don't violate your standards and make sure you do it well in the future. Could your standards be unreasonable? You bet. There's a woman in this room I heard about it was feeling guilty because last night she came here and she wasn't with her kids on Halloween. Oh, oh my God. Can you believe that? But let, let's all look at that person. I don't know where they are. Let's pretend we can see them and give them dirty looks. How dare you? Come on, return the person to you. How dare you? Now, you know something's funny? We all have rules. Are our rules always fair, yes or no? No. Sometimes we have totally unreasonable rules. Like in order to be successful, we have to like change the entire world tomorrow, have everybody be happy all the time, have everybody love us at every moment, have our kids be thrilled, make eight billion dollars a year, right? It's gonna be pretty hard to meet that rule. So sometimes the feedback you're getting about frustration or disappointment is, sometimes it's saying, you got totally unfair rules for yourself. Sometimes when you're angry, you may be saying, your rules are too stringent for other people. Maybe you need to remember about those people with quintuplets, have a few less rules, you have a lot less anger. Does that make sense? Seven, if you feel overwhelmed, helpless or depressed or oh, well, helpless or depressed that's a message and the message that your brain is giving you is you're over chunked what people used to say is oh man there's too much I gotta change everything in my life don't you can't change everything in your life at one time do it a step at a time where do you start where you are sit down and reprioritize overwhelm or depressed says sit down and prioritize that is just write a list of what's most important for you to do what could you do right away to start feeling better what could I do right away to start feeling better? What could I do to take control right away? It won't solve it all. What just what could you do? Make a list in order. And then go do the first one. Take action. This is saying, overwhelm is saying, you got to stop trying to do everything at once. You need to make a list of what you need to do and do one thing well. As soon as you do that one thing well, you'll feel like you're in control of your life. You keep one commitment to yourself. And all of a sudden, you feel good again. You start feeling like you're in control. You don't feel depressed anymore. How many buy this theory? I tell you, if you do it, it'll work. Feeling alone. All that is is a message that you need to connect with people. You need to change the way you're doing it. Right now, you're perceiving you're alone. Change what your perception is. You need to change your action. Go out and meet somebody. Go out and talk to somebody. Go out and initiate. Go out and be more loving. Right? So if you're feeling alone, it means, hey, go out. It means you need to connect with another human being. And nine, if you feel inadequate, that's a message that you need to change your standards because you're being unfair to yourself. Or get committed in mastering this area. Change your standards. Some people like, they feel inadequate unless they're perfect at something the day they started. How many were great the first day that you ever tried to tie your shoes? No. Nah. How many of you are confident in tying your shoes now? Can I see your hands? How many are real confident? No. How many feel like, man, you can flat out tie your shoes? No problem. Let me see if hands here. No problem. Why? That's right, because you do it all the time. So you do anything you do over and over again, you get good at if you're feeling adequate, maybe because your standard is you're trying to be perfect the first time. You're not going to be perfect the first time. How dumb.